Good evening and welcome to the Mid-American Gardener. My name is Mike Brunk and I'm tonight's host. We are excited to take your calls and answer your questions tonight. And we have yet another great panel of specialists who are primed with write-in questions to start the show. So let's meet our panel of experts and get this show growing. <laughs> Across the way from me is Dyke Barkley. Dyke, introduce yourself and tell us what you know. All right, my name is Dyke Barkley from down at Paris, Illinois. Uh, I teach the horticulture program at Lakeland College and then run my own place called Barkley Farms Nurseries. Uh, the first email question I had was, was, it was a nice one from the standpoint, large containers, what could they do to get some colorful grasses? And they were specifically asking about fountain grass. And the first thing I want to say is fountain grass is a huge family. It has both annuals and perennials in it. And I brought this one that isn't very big yet, but this is the purple fountain grass where the tips right now are just purple, but the hotter it gets and the more sun it gets, it'll turn a dark burgundy, two to three foot tall. Some plumes will start to come out. This is a little green leaf one called annual fountain grass that blooms really, really heavy. Um, also napier grass would be a good choice. There's a couple of kinds from Prince uh, to Princess or First Night. First Night's gonna get about four feet. Prince, if you got huge containers or in the ground, they get six feet. Uh, the, the blade is much wider the size of your thumb and very vertical, very, very dark purple, easy maintenance, easy to grow, uh, do great things. Why would you want to mess with an annual grass? And no, none of the purple grasses come as a perennial, uh, but they grow fast and they love the heat. That's going to be the key for them, low maintenance. Now, grass is a lot of fun. Now, most of those are sun plants? Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Six hours. Good to know. Well, try some grasses. They're a lot of fun to play with. Next to me, Shane Coultra. Shane, what do you have tonight? Hi, I'm Shane Coultra. I'm one of the family owners of Country Arbor's Nursery in Urbana and Culture Nurseries in Onaria, Illinois. And we grow a little bit of everything. We've got trees, shrubs, perennials, annuals, so I can answer any of the questions in that area. And tonight I brought uh, something that's really popular this time of year, and that's iris. The reason I brought this one is, you know, we grow a lot of plants and, and there's lots of great fragrances at the nursery, but this one really caught my eye as I was leaving to come to the show, and I could smell this great flavor. It smelled like bubblicious gum. And it turned out to be this Albo variegata iris. It's got beautiful foliage, but this smells exactly like grape. I had everybody at the studio smell and it just it just smelled wonderful and it's just an easy to grow plant iris are very easy to grow they bloom really nice but there are some irises that bloom twice a year so they'll bloom now and they'll also bloom later in the year and i brought a couple of those that are that are pretty popular this one's called rip city it's got a great color to it that maroon color again it'll bloom now come back in the summer and another one we had here was i believe this was yeah breakers so breakers is a real similar in color to this one but again, it's got this little foliage in these falls. So if you're looking at plants, you want some good fragrance, easy to grow. It just doesn't get any better than iris. Yeah, it looks like they've got a wide variety of colors that yeah, come, they come in. There's hundreds of different varieties of iris out there. And again, you just can't miss You Keep it dry, let it go, and you'll have a beautiful patch of iris. Great, great. Thanks, Shane. Thanks. And Jen, in the middle, Jen Nelson. Hi, I'm Jen Nelson. I'm a horticulturalist, and I write a blog called Grounded and Growing. Um, I brought tonight an example of a shrub rose, and we all hear about knockout roses all the time, but this is an example from a series called Oh So Easy from Proven Winners, and this variety is called Italian Ice. I had grown one called Paprika, which is an orange one with kind of a yellow center for years, and was really impressed with how well it grew with very little care, almost neglect. Uh, so this year I bought this Italian ice one, and I, it was more beautiful in person than it was in the catalog, believe it or not. I know a lot of times we order something and our expectations are high and then we get it and we look at it and we're disappointed. But in this case, I was just, just thrilled with how just much more uh, unique and beautiful the flowers are. They're kind of white puffball in the center and just these soft pink petals. And they last um, fair long, fairly long time. And if it's anything like paprika, it'll be blooming uh, well into the fall. Um, so, and hopefully it will thrive on neglect just like paprika did. Uh, so try it out. Yeah, very interesting. Those are pretty little roses. Is that the size they uh, get, uh, the, their mature size? Yeah, this is the mature size. The, the shrub itself is, this one gets about a foot and a half, two feet tall. So it's a little smaller uh -huh. in stature than your gigantic knockout roses that if we have a mild winter, you're, they're six feet tall. Sure, right. But um, yeah, but it's definitely a different different one to try and super, super hardy. Great, good. All right, well, hey, 
Before we go on to our calls, I have a reminder for people to check out our podcast. And we are on episode nine now. And that podcast, episode nine, is available for streaming via Mid American Gardener website. Or you can also listen and subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, and the NPR One app. And this episode's guest is Jen Nelson. So tune in and get a double gin, right? <laughs> Okay, so looks like we've got a caller on line two. Let's go to the phones. Steve out of Princeville, you have a question about asparagus. Yes, I got asparagus bed going to third year, and this year it's not coming up. Just a couple, two or three hills. Could it be a little early with the mm -hmm. degree days? No, they no. finally started coming. Yeah. Now mine, mine came up and got actually froze and then fell over limp and I thought I was in trouble because mine's a new patch but then they came back not much only like one or two shoot but mine are young but hmm. I don't know I anything unusual you're doing in the area uh, any herbicides or anything like that uh, you might be using no no uh, uh, fertilizer and uh, some lime I did put straw out this winter I didn't know I might have it a little planted a little too deep, but it's come up the last two years. Hmm. Yeah, you know, it was a terrible, as a person that's in a garden center that's fielding questions about what's dying, I think the lack of snow cover this year sure. really impacted. Coral bells are mm -hmm. struggling. Of course, not a boodlia in sights alive. Right. Yeah. Uh, knockout roses down nothing. And then you dike hit it on the head. Now you have the ones that did make it through, they come up and they got yeah. knocked one more yeah, time. So. Uh, it's been bad. It's been really bad. It's Super a, dry. As a person mm -hmm. that guarantees plants, I can tell you it is. Uh, the winter was much harsher because of the lack of snow cover than normal. And, it, and I wouldn't be surprised to give the bad news that you lost your patch. Yeah. So yeah. Um, probably pure, pure winter. Replant and yeah, replant. I think the time for hoping and wishing is over. It's been warm enough. It's mm -hmm. been almost 90. So anything that's going to pop through is going to show some signs right now. Okay. Great. Great. Not Thanks the sure. news you wanted to hear, but it's yeah. the truth. Looks like we have a call on line three. Maggie from Urbana, you have a question about pink spirea. Yes, I have some very old pink spirea, which did not come through very well after the winter. I have a lot of uh, dead woody spikes and um, not a lot of new growth. I'm wondering if I should do anything at this point, or should I wait until fall and cut them back severely, or do you have some other suggestions? No. I would say cut them back Go now. Go ahead and cut them back yeah. now. Definitely all the dead, cut them back. Mm -hmm. and Yeah. Spirea is one of those plants that will come back even better than before if you just whack it back all the way to the ground. They're tough. Yeah, they are, especially the pink spirea that she's yeah. describing. So, yeah, there's spirea next to my parents' home that I guess it's over, how old am I? It's probably <laughs> 50 plus years old. We used to play ball down in this area and they just keep on going. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, hack it back to the ground and fertilize it and it should flush right back out if you have any signs of growth. All right, great. Thanks guys for that answer. Uh, I've got another reminder for folks on Saturday, June 9th, the Mid-American Gardener fans will have the opportunity to board for a day of garden fun at the beautiful 79 acre St. Louis Botanical Gardens. This wonderful tour includes a stop at Altworks Garden Center admittance to the Botanical Garden, lunch at Sassafras Restaurant, time to explore plus interaction with fabulous master gardeners. Can't get much better than that. So this trip is available as a thank you for a donation of $150 or more to the Illinois Public Media. So that's just $12.50 a month. Now that sounds pretty cool, that, that bus trip. You can visit www.illinois.edu slash forward slash will will travel so that's w-i-l-l dot illinois dot edu forward slash will travel today and reserve your spot okay let's go back to the phones and we have a caller on line six alan from decatur you have a question about peonies yeah man about pineys are you there yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh when I come here about 27 years ago, uh, they were really damn good, you know what I mean? Really bloomed and everything, you know, a lot of blooms. And 
here in the last couple of years, they, uh, they ain't been booming very much. And uh, I, I, I was wondering if there's something I could put, put on them. Or, usually, pineys you don't do much to, you know. I don't know what's happened to the blooms, you know. Are they? Uh, How's the shade? Yeah. Well, make it, sure they still had sun, like yeah. she said. Make sure the foliage didn't cut off, get cut off too quick. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'll that's leave usually to the die out and get get enough sun. And they're they're are they mulched? Are they in a bed area? Or are they? Well, they're right next to my driveway. Hmm. Ah, do you come out to drive? You know, do you put down winter salts for melting the snow? Uh, I used to. I don't anymore. Yeah, I did it first, but I, I haven't done that for a while. I, I'm up in age now, and and if it if it's too much snow, we just don't go out. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's, that's probably wise. Sounds you have to be nice. careful with the salts. Yeah, but they say you might have a heart attack, you know, <laughs> seven around. Uh, Usually, it, if peonies don't bloom, they're stressed somehow. Yeah. So I dry winter. Yeah. Yeah. Figure out why they're not. You know. And they don't tend to be like irises when they get too big, then they right. stop blooming. They tend to keep going, but um, I mean, it can, it's hard, but I've never seen a peony run out of nutrients because they'll grow right. almost anywhere, but uh, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to fertilize. I, I've more. seen them they planted too deep and not bloom. Yeah. I've seen them, so he's given it after you know, 20 years, it just knock the start. foliage, but I, mm -hmm. You just give them a little extra TLC yeah, this year. could yeah. be. You're not using any herbicides on your turf or anything new in the area the past couple of years as far as weed control? What you say, Larry? Are you using any kind of new weed control, like a? Oh, well, in the driveway now. I do spray my driveway. With, well, uh, you can repetitively spray near plants like this, and it can have a residual effect, and over time cause problems. So, uh, you need to be careful with uh, spraying even the cracks uh, in your driveway that are near mm -hmm. a plant like this, because you can have residual effect depending on what you're using. That might be it. Yeah, that yeah. might be it. My wife can tell that story. She sprayed the bricks to get the oh, no. to get the weeds in the cracks of the brick, and then my lawn disappeared from about one <laughs> foot out. Yeah, she learned a little bit about residual. Okay, well, so maybe we maybe we keyed on residual. something there. Yeah, maybe yeah you might, you I wouldn't be spraying around that. Even even peonies can't take a big hit. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move on to our next caller on line four. It's Wilma from Tinona. You have a question uh, about fall clematis. Yeah. What's your question? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, okay, I have a fall clematis, and I was told to cut it back in the fall or not to cut it back, and it looks really, really bad. It's clear across the fence. And so are we supposed to cut back the fall clematis or not? You, you can. That, that's a tough clematis. It isn't going to care mm -hmm. either way. But you would prune it in the spring. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you can cut it back. I've seen it cut to the ground and come back. I've seen where you just kind of neaten it up and then let it run back up its old own vines. Um, I, it's tolerant. I think you can do anything you want. Yeah, yeah, this year it took a big hit. It was one of those lists of plants that died pretty hard. So there's some years where you get lucky. You know, we have one that's probably 40 feet tall that runs wow. up our radio tower. And on a good year, it will actually green up all the way to wow. the top right off. But the last couple of years, it, had, it's, it started over and had to climb itself again. Hmm. But this year, you're going to start from scratch again, I yeah. think. But you don't have to. But if it gets ugly and you don't like the side of the old wood, you certainly can trim it back. Okay, I hope that helped you, Wilma. We've got another caller on line two, Fred from Springfield. You have a question about sunflowers and pole beans. Yes. Uh, I have uh, got a nice row of the giant uh, sunflowers, and I've read that you can plant pole beans uh, right next to them. And I, my question is about the timing. How long do I wait for uh, to plant the uh, the beans? I would think you'd go mm -hmm. in about the same time mm -hmm. because the sunflowers are such a rapid grower. They're going to put on, you know, right now they're putting on six inches every couple of days because they're growing so fast with this heat. So I would think that you'd want to get them in within a week or two of planting the actual sunflower seed. So it's getting, I'm not going to say it's getting late, but it's, it's time to get it in. Yeah, You're just you, using it like a pole. Right. You don't, but you don't want the sunflowers to be so big that their leaves are shading out the beans. So yeah. you do want to get them in. Yeah. Um, Got to space it a little yeah. bit on your sunflower. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Let's go on to our next caller. 
Line five, Tom from Shelby. You've got a question about a ginkgo tree. Yes, our, our ginkgo tree has leafed out very well this year, except the fact that the leaves are small and they're brown and yellow on the ends and curly. Uh, hmm. And have you had, uh, it's been super dry this winter, so uh, in your area, how has the rain been this spring? Well, it, there was a lot of it for a while, and then not so much as right mm -hmm. now. But I did, you know, put five gallon of water on it, and I have fertilized it. How big is the ginkgo tree? Oh, it's probably two inches in diameter. Ah, uh, okay. So you may need to water that on a weekly basis um, um, to keep it uh, established here and, and becoming, uh, to help it get established, I guess I'm saying, in the, in the first couple, three years. So that root system, how long has it been in the ground? Eight years. Oh, eight years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, it could be water. Are you putting anything on your turf that's new? <laughs> um, Something stressed it. Yeah. yeah. Well, the fact that it's only two inches after eight years means you put in a real small tree mm -hmm. to start with. Yes, we did. On a ginkgo, so uh, you're pa you're a very patient person. Are you using <laughs> Are you using a weed and feed on your turf in the near near area of the tree? Oh, yeah, some. You, you got to be careful because mm -hmm. uh, trees are basically big broadleaf weeds, and uh, that would repetitive. explain the the kinking and the small mm -hmm. leaves. That yeah. would explain that. Two four D possibly with the twisting and contortion. Yeah. Are they contorted? The leaves? Yes, they're they're, they're curled. Okay, well, part of that and part of that's timing. If the leaves are just so opening up, is when they're the most sensitive to chemical damage like that. Yeah. Sometimes after a tree is completely leafed out, and then you use the same product, so that's why you may not see the same results year to mm -hmm. year or even in yard to yard, because when those leaves are just opening and not mature, that's when they're the most sensitive. Is, yeah. Is it all over the tree or just certain all, limbs? All over. Okay. I thought maybe it was a frost. And that very well could be, although the, the, they tend to be one of the later leafers, mm -hmm. so those in the beach. Well, the other thing with the frost is it would be putting out new leaves that would look fine now. Some mm -hmm. later leaves would come out that would be fine. But if you're not seeing that over the whole tree, then that's where I'd think that frost, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. May want to cut back to maybe spot treatment of broadleaf weeds rather than broadcasting. Mm -hmm. or and I stress tree, I wouldn't necessarily push with fertilizer. Right. I don't. Although that's not a brand new tree, eight years, but yeah. Yeah, fertilizers, dry soil, I mean, it's all salt, so it can add to the desiccation of roots. So I would agree, I don't know that you would really want to fertilize a lot, uh, especially if you're putting down other lawn chemicals. So hopefully that advice helps a little bit. Let's move on to line three. Carol in Springfield, you have a question on a patient's virus. No, on a patient. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, about four years ago, we lost some large beds planted with impatiens. Uh, the plant stems were soft and the leaves all dropped. And uh, we were advised at that time not to replant impatiens in those beds and uh, not to replant in those beds for a while. So I guess my question is, since we love those plants, is it safe to start planting those back in those beds again? Good question. You have to buy, the, you have, the new impatients are called bounce series. They're disease resistant, the impatient virus resistant. So you need to go into your garden center and ask for the impatient virus resistant varieties because they are out there. It's a big problem. You're not the only one that has it. But there are, if you get the bounce series, you can go right back in there and not have to worry about that. And pretty soon, I'd say in the next three or four years, all impatients will be. Right. Yeah, they're uh, coming out with new ones. Every day, yeah. The bounce he's talking about have. Bounce? Yeah. yeah, there's there's others too, the sun patients and bounce and, and what it is they're using uh, other impatience mm -hmm. to get the to get the resistance. They're using New Guinea and other types of species. And yeah. crossing them, yeah, yeah, to get that. Are they just as florific as impatience? Yeah, I mean, they're the, bigger probably. Yeah, than some of the, other the sun patients. patients are an amazing they're plant. Beautiful. They've really kind of taken over the market. They can take sun and shade, and they bloom a lot of water. The, that big mm -hmm. New Guinea yeah. flower. Yeah, they're they're great. We really like them. So there's there's hope for you. Good. All right, Carol, I hope that helped. Uh, let's move on to our next caller on line four, Dot, from Alexandra. Alexander, old dogwood tree. You have a question? Yes. I have an old dogwood. Um, the last couple years, this 
lost a lot. Uh, it's dying off in, in certain parts, but this winter is really brutal. I've lost probably over half of it. Is there anything I can do, or is it just time to take that tree down? <laughs> hard to say yes. since we don't <laughs> see it. Yeah. Fifty percent of it being lost, is that what I understood? Yeah, it's I'd say about fifty percent. I'm, I'm in Morgan County and we've had two summers of just brutal heat and dry. You know, it's been dry and I have watered it some, but probably maybe not as much as I should. But yeah, I'd say fifty percent of it's gone. It sounds right. like it's on its way out and it really is up to you, but it sounds like you might be better off starting over mm -hmm. with something new yeah. i'm just that's the first time i've ever heard anybody tell me say they might not have done proper watering because <laughs> any person i've ever met <laughs> followed it to a t and it's not their fault so <laughs> kudos to her for actually admitting that maybe she didn't get it uh, but i always tell people trim out the dead spend the time look at it can you take it do you like it is it pretty if not keep chopping take yes. it all the way down and you may yeah. want to go ahead and start something else and then give this mm -hmm. some more time and then you know do a crossover between the new and the old. Yeah. All right. Good answers. We've got a caller on line two named Janet. She's from Clint Clinton, and she'd like to know how to plant flocks. Yes. Go ahead, Janet. Well, I I had ordered it on QVC, <laughs> and I got it, and it I didn't get the instructions with it. I don't believe. It seemed like it had a ball underneath it, and it had little um, things sticking out on top. Hair. <laughs> was it? And I wasn't flocks? sure if they were roots or not. <laughs> was well, it supposed to be creeping uh, flocks? Normally, QVC plants yeah. are top notch. So. <laughs> I know it. I know it. And I might have. I ordered so many plants, I might have mixed them up or lost the instructions. But I just wanted to know which way was up. There was a little dark ball underneath. Oh, so this That's, is like a dormant plant? Yeah, it's, pro yeah. it's probably creeping flocks is what I'm thinking. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's creeping flocks, yeah. So the prickly part is the top. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you want you want to put the you want to put the the prickly or the greener side if it has a it looks it looks like a little bit like hair, um, although that's going to be confusing too because that's the root <laughs> yeah. side. But um, yeah, you definitely got to figure out what side's the top of the plant. It's kind of hard. But the good thing about creeping flox is you kind of you can lay it in there and It'll it might have it a out. chance to come in there. But you you it's QVC plants will be a little tough to start <laughs> with. They're really um, Probably a good place to get dishes, but I'm not sure that a plant is yeah. always the best way to start. But if you have a picture, I'm sure you could send it in and we could uh, figure out which side to plant upwards for you. But we'd have to see it in person, I think. Yeah, that could be interesting. But that, <laughs> that wouldn't hang on very long. It'd have to be getting in the ground. Or uh, gonna... yeah. yeah, I would think you'd want to plant at least try and find the roots and put them in some soil. And mm -hmm. then you can make the next step and figure out how to get them in the garden. Well, they're in the soil, but I thought I read somewhere where you put sprinkled dirt over the top. Mm. If it was creeping, you could do that, but mm -hmm. you would definitely see the green. You know, that the, the, the creeping fox likes to lay on top. You put a little sand, a little peat moss soil, and then you lay it on the top. So that could be okay. what they mean by that. Okay. Yeah. Well, that'll give you a well, good start. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for your call. We appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. We've got maybe time for one more quick call, and we've got a caller on line one, Carol from Alton. Fescue treatment, what, what's your question? We'll see if we can get it answered. A lawn service that does my yard for several years, you know, treats it. And this year I've discovered I have a lot of fescue in my yard, and he was out today and told me the treatment, and I wondered what time of year you thought was the best to treat this. So you've got tall fescue probably growing in is bluegrass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I don't. I don't know much about. I, over I the don't top. worry about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I actually sell it with fescue in it because <laughs> yeah. it's got a better root system. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I think we're out of time, and I want to take uh, this moment to thank our panel of experts for their time this evening, and I want to thank all of you 
for supporting and watching WLL and the Mid-American Gardener. And uh, don't forget to check out our podcast, Episode 9, and look into the MAG bus trip tour. And please, uh, uh, oh, and if you didn't get your questions answered tonight, you can call in on a voicemail and leave a voicemail at 217-300-8224. So that, that uh, voicemail is accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 217-300-8224. And don't forget to check out the bus tour trip and please tune us in next week and have a very good evening. Thank you.